Hi everyone, Robert Villanueva here. As always, I'll see you at the top. All right, cool. All right, so those of you guys that are over on Facebook, I want to take a minute to introduce uh, my good friend, Mr. David Aristamian. We're going to get to know him today. Yeah, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to grill him just with a bunch of questions. So, <laughs> and we're going to get right into it. Yeah, for sure. All right, so David, first off, of course, welcome. Thank you. Excited to be here. Appreciate the yeah. opportunity. Yeah, man, absolutely. So excited to be back. Yeah, for sure. It's been a minute. I think the last time we did this was probably about maybe two years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been, it's been, it's been All right. So let's get to know David a little bit better. And uh, what I want to do is I'm just going to go through a rapid fire series of questions. We'll get into the meat and potatoes of the questions in a little bit. So let's start with how long you've been in the business. So full time 2016, mm -hmm. part time 2009. Okay. And I, I guess I should say um, when I was licensed in 2009, I was licensed in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And then when I got my license to go full time, uh, I'm in Arizona. Cool. Okay. So you've been in the business for basically almost 10 years, a little over 10 years now. And you're also in Mike Ferry coaching. How long have you been in Mike Ferry coaching? So Mike Ferry coaching, luckily I started as soon as I got, I went full time. So I started actually in May of 2016. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So yeah, you're coming up on 10 years on that one as well. Uh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your production. Uh, last year's production units and income sold last year. What'd you do last year? Yeah, I actually have my numbers pulled up. So uh, last year, my team and I did 103 units um, mm -hmm. um, for myself. For the company was about two million. Mm -hmm. um, 2016, I guess I should say, when I first started, 15 deals. I went from 15 deals to 29 deals to 73 deals. Okay. And then 2019, we actually dropped production a little bit because my buyer's agent left. Yeah. So that was, I went down to 59. And then 2020, we did 101. 2021, we did 119. Yeah. Um, 22, 106, and 2023, 103. Yeah, so you're floating in that um, 100 plus mark. So good for you. Um, what's the goal this year, though? What do you want to do? What are we doing this year? So the goal this year is for me to do 75, which is not as many as I did last year. Um, mm -hmm. However, for my team to do about 50. So the, the goal for us is 125 units um, as a team. And as a small team, I have three three agents that work with me. Okay. Yeah, we'll get into that here in a little bit. So the goal is to do 125 this year. And then um, let's take a look. As far as your average sales price, you're a little bit unique from some of the other people that I interview because you work with a lot of higher end stuff. So what's your average price point? Average price point 1.2 right now. Um, and the goal for 2024 is to have an average price point of 1.5. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, being in Scottsdale mostly is is always, of course, helpful. So um, it, let's talk a little bit about the area that you service. Uh, obviously, there's Scottsdale. What other areas do you service in Arizona? Yeah, so our offices in Scottsdale, we're right in Old Town, basically. Like, I can walk to everything uh, from here. I can actually walk to my gym as well as walk to uh, where I live, my, my unit. So um, yeah. I try to be super, super efficient. But um, my... I went from servicing like the entire Valley to kind of focusing on Scottsdale and Paradise Valley, Phoenix, mm -hmm. Fountain Hills. And then, you know, where I, where I started was like Mesa, Chandler, Gilbert, uh, it's called Southeast Valley. Mm -hmm. um, so basically we're trying to hone in. I'm not trying to drive 30,000 miles a year anymore, which is what I used to do in 2016. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cottonwood, uh, I just saw that come up. I don't service Cottonwood, but I know a really good agent that I can connect you with up there. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, all right. So where do you get most of your business from? So I actually, thanks to you, finished last year's sourcing of my deals. Uh, <laughs> thanks for this. Thanks to this interview. Yeah. Uh, I would say if I include my agent referrals as part of my COI and past clients, mm -hmm. uh, it's about... 45% of my business um, and about 40% of my business is coming from expireds and canceled. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it is a combination of 
um, just listed, just sold door knocking, um, come list me calls, sign calls, maybe a referral company like Homelight, mm -hmm. uh, an open house lead, or uh, a lead that comes in off of a mailer that I send out. But the majority of my business is expired cancels, past clients, COI, and agent referrals. Yeah, absolutely. And this goes a little bit to the direction that I talk about all the time from a coach's perspective is, is that every agent that is doing business in this level has a solid foundation with their personal database. And I think that that's always for me with agents as I'm coaching them, that's that's a challenge for them. And the reason I say that it's a challenge for them is because um, they don't want to call their friends. They don't want to call their family. They feel like they're bugging them. And then they're wondering why they are like, you know, uh, you know, on that roller coaster ride of, you know, two closing, zero, zero, one closing, you know. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I mean, guys, if you're not calling your past clients and database, then I am. So um, don't lose your business to me. Right. Like I'd, I'll take it. But what's the point? You have the connection there. That should be your absolute go to every single day. Double down on the database. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's move over to the direction of your team. You talked about your team because this is another thing that is really important that everybody understands in the audience. Um, you know, there's different ways of building a team. I like to with what I call is building a team organically. And then there is the collection of licenses that a lot of uh, agents will have this tendency of doing. Um, how many agents, staff members, what does your team look like? We're, we're pretty efficient. Even though I'm huge on customer service, I don't have many lockbox properties, guys. Most of my properties are private, private, private showing, a company showing. Um, so I'm huge on customer service. So I do have a full-time admin. I have a full-time listing coordinator. And I have a full-time transaction coordinator. So uh, those three girls help me and I can't function without them. Uh, I'm the team lead. And then I have basically three agents that work under me and they can list or they can handle buyers, whatever they prefer. They can do a combination of both. I used to have only buyers agents, switch that up probably in the last like 12 months uh -huh. um, and allowed them to list properties as well. So we're a really efficient team cool. um, pulling in. I think as a team, we pull in like two and a half mm -hmm. uh, million bucks a year or so. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, because a lot of times what I end up people will do is they'll come into the business, they end up doing, you know, 10, 12, 15 deals They're in the uh, business now for two or three years, and they go, hey, let me build a team and let me start to collect licenses. And then they get big headed because I'm doing 100 deals a year, but I got 20 agents underneath me. <laughs> so. And I like to tell people, that's a great point, Robert, that yeah. I'm, I'm not a manager, like I'm not a leadership manager. I'm a, I'm a leader by example. I'm, I don't want to manage people. I'd rather just produce at a high level and then get to the point, which is what I'm doing now. I mean, today I, g I gave a one one point four million dollar listing opportunity to one of my agents that worked for me. Um, he is, he's going on another one tomorrow. It's five hundred fifty thousand. It's a listing. And these are people that reached out to me or I reached out to and set an appointment with and then connected um, my team members with them. Yeah, I like that. Now, um, I wanted to go through just those series of questions because I know everybody always asks a little bit about that. Let me get a little bit deeper on some of these questions now. Um, but before I do that, uh, for referrals, how do we get referrals out to David? What's the best way for agents to reach out to you and send you business? Yeah, so if you have anybody moving to Arizona, I like to say any part of Arizona because I can always connect you with a good agent, but the best way to reach me is by phone. You can text me or call me. And my personal phone, which is not on MLS or anything like that, is 480-331-0707, 480-331-0707. Or you guys can email me um, and then my TC will handle the referral fee and everything, uh, referral agreement and everything. Um, and that's just first dot last name at Russ Lyon, R-U-S-S-L-Y-O-N.com. Got it. Okay. So there you have it, guys. So make sure we get David some referrals out in that direction. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Absolutely. All right. So so now let's get into a little bit of the deeper conversations. Now, as far as sources is concerned, you obviously went over your database. You talked about expires. You talked about for sale by owners. You talked about just listed, just solds, and some other sources. What's the source that you find the most value in? For me, it's expireds. Uh, I built my entire business off expireds. I moved to Arizona in 2015 and uh, Thanksgiving day of 2015. Okay. So I've, I haven't even been here for eight years. Okay. Um, and 
my entire business was built off calling expireds. I did do a lot of calls. Uh, I still do a lot of calls to expireds, but um, it's the most profitable source. Honestly, it's the lowest hanging fruit. Okay. Um, other, other than for sale by owners, uh-huh. which is other super low hanging fruit. And interestingly enough, I think I did one for sale by owner last year. And what's interesting is the year prior, I did seven. So I, I, I should get back on that because I because I did really well in 2022 20, uh, with the for sale by owners. Yeah. And those are things that we always want to, of course, pay attention to. This isn't a coaching session, but we always got to monitor, you know, the sources and, you know, are we going up? Are we going down? And why are we going up? And why are we going down? Sometimes it's out of our control. Sometimes the market just gets really strong, gets really hot, gets really aggressive. And then all of a sudden, boom, the expires are gone. The FISBOs, I don't want to say they're gone, but they become harder uh, because there's less of them. Um, So we got to look at other sources that we can increase uh, business from. What's probably the most challenged source for you? Hmm. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say um, I'm not reaching out to as many um, for rent by owners anymore. Okay. I've done a lot of rent by owners in the past. I uh, haven't done any in the last two years. I'm not calling them. I'm not calling probates, but that's kind of intentional because a lot of the probate stuff is lower price point that I don't um, particularly want to work at, at all. Um, mm. I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty consistent with the, I just stick with what works, you know, like sure. everybody looks for like the magic bullet and they're like, well, what else can I do? It's like, no, just do what you're supposed to do really well. And then you won't have to look at what else you can do. Um, And just to really quickly go back to your team point, I mean, I know agents in in the office here that, you know, they'll do 10, 20 deals and then they start building this team. And it's crazy because, and then they have issues with the team and it's like, well, you have no value as a leader Mm -hmm. to even have the team. The team members don't value you because you're not giving them anything. So like, for example, we have, and there's agents that do way more than me, but we have 25 signs out right now. Uh And what do the signs do? They generate us, sign sign calls and we did last year i think four deals off sign calls or something i mean it's not bad just 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 off a sign call i mean this is it's pretty simple right uh, so that's that's where a lot of our leads come from are, are these sign calls Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Let's talk a little bit about um, another challenge that I see a lot of um, agents have. And the challenge is fighting complacency. Uh, And this is this is um, sometimes with people, you know, they get to a certain level, they get to the century mark, I'm doing 100 deals, and then they just find themselves just kind of like, okay, here's where I'm at. How, How do you fight complacency? Yeah. Um, So I invest all my money. Um, I, I don't have more than 12 months reserves at a period of time in my bank account. Um, so if something happens to me health wise, I, I can survive for about 12 months. I have enough passive income anyway to, to, to surpass that, but, um, because I invest all my money. But so what I do is every commission check I get, I look at it as passive income. So instead of getting a $20,000 commission check, I look at that, uh, okay, $20,000 at 5% is a thousand bucks. And basically it's a year. So I divide that by 12 and it's approximately a hundred dollars a month in passive income. So if I want to have a supercar, let's say, uh, that's worth, I don't know, let's say the payment is 2,500 bucks. I need to have 25 of those. So I need to have about $450,000 in commission checks approximately, or $500,000, I guess, in commission checks. And then I can pay for my supercar without actually paying anything at all you're just using the the tenant income to pay for your uh, supercars or toys or whatever you want to call them yeah so you're building wealth is the first intention and then you're rewarding yourself after the fact with uh the passive income that's being generated uh that's that's huge man i love that uh that's definitely a way of uh you know thinking big that's a way of of course being in a position where you're constantly building your bottom line because some people think the other way around where they'll sit there and say okay now i'm making you know 10 grand a month let me go get the supercar and um yeah because i can afford it at these conversations i last night at the gym i had a conversation with an agent i was like why are you driving an Audi R8, dude? You made like 250 grand last year. You're driving a $200,000 car and you made 250 grand. I'm like, that makes no sense. I should have a Bugatti if <laughs> that was the case. And I and it doesn't make sense for me to have a Bugatti. Because for you to have a Bugatti, you need to have a net worth, in my opinion, of like 30 million bucks. Yeah. You get 30 million bucks net worth, you can get a $2 million car. 
Yeah. So I'm hoping the audience is really paying attention to with what David is just talking about here, because this is a way of also looking at your goal setting. This is something that is really important from a direction of what, what it is that I want in life. And what David is doing is he's, he's simply wedging wealth <laughs> between that goal, which is super cool. And, and, and it's something that um, I really admire, you know, a lot about David. I, I admire a lot about agents that think at a bigger level. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the thinking big part. Um, what, what's helped you think bigger? So I don't want this to come off um, maybe the wrong way, but, um, we like, I, I personally, our family came from nothing. So we came to, we came to the United States in 1992. I was just a few years old. Uh, we came here as refugees. So we got housing in a basement. We shared the basement of a con condo complex with another family. I mean, it was like really shit. Right. So yeah. parents went through, my dad was um, pumping gas. My mom baked cakes illegally in a basement for a Greek guy because we're Armenian. So mm -hmm. that guy took care of her. Uh, then my dad got a car. Then he started delivering pizzas. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. They went through such a hard time building to where we are today. Yeah. And then it's, and then we're going to complain about getting on the phone for three hours a day or door knocking for three hours a day. Like their life was so much harder. We were kicked out of a country. We were almost killed on the way out of this country to escape, um, you know, this, this this religion issue that, that was happening at the time. We have no excuse to to not push hard. And, and, and you know, I, I was sitting at dinner with my parents two days ago and my, my mom was like, David, I never knew you were going to be in this position i'm buying them a new car so right mm -hmm. now i'm my admin who i just hired less than two months ago who's absolutely been incredible for me um she doesn't have a lot of money and her car just broke down and the repair is like a thousand bucks and she doesn't have it so mm -hmm. i said you know what forget it i'm gonna give you my dad's car which is a 2017 x5 which is worth like 25 grand 30 grand and i'm gonna get my dad a new truck mm -hmm. and because i can't make those payments right. but i can because yeah. i've where I, where I am and where they helped me get. Yep. So it's like, we have no excuse to not push hard, give back to our family, give back to people that have helped us along the way. Um, I don't know, man. I, mm. it's, I don't even need the push. I, I It's it's inside me. I got a chip on my shoulder. Everybody says you got a chip on your shoulder. I do. I'm yeah. cool with it. <laughs> I, I think the one thing is, is that, um, thank you for sharing that, by the way, because it's not always easy to reveal some of those layers, but being in a position where um, sometimes for people, it's not about the fear of failure. You know, um, it's a little bit of this. I've failed in life before. I've been at the bottom. I know with what it life looks like when it sucks. It's about getting to the other side of that. And one thing that I see with individuals like yourself, sometimes it could be a little bit of the fear of success. Um, did you ever experience that in your journey of where you're at now? I think so. I think we have seasons in life where we go through these mm -hmm. things that we're like, holy shit, like we just made a million bucks. Like, but 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 as long as you're really financially savvy, and I have really good, in my opinion, mentors like Grant Cardone, not like he's not somebody that I look up to, but in a way he's, he's like a mentor. So if, as long as we have people that are helping us place our money and mm -hmm. we got to get rid of the money we make in, in a way where we're, we're building wealth, like you said, because guys with, with multifamily investing, for example, which is what I do, you get mm -hmm. depreciation, accelerated depreciation, cost segregation. Mm -hmm. uh, you save a ton of money on taxes. Obviously you're going to, you're going to regain it if they sell the property, but mm -hmm. there, there's just so many benefits to it. Not only the cash flow, but the, the the tax savings are incredible. So as yeah. long as you know where to put your money, I think um, it's really easy to yeah. to continue pushing. And like I said, we just have no excuse to not yep. produce at that level. We have so much given to us. I don't know if anybody is where people are from, but you know, I visited Lebanon a few years ago and, mm -hmm. and with one of my best friends. And I've never even been to Armenia, but I'm actually taking my parents on like an all ex like all exclusive first class penthouse like dude the freaking airplane tickets are seven g's a piece Goodness. right just a round trip ticket so it's like twenty one thousand, just an airfare mm -hmm. and i'm and i just i'm booking it like all out my dad's like why are you doing this i'm like dude if we're going we're gonna go we're, we're gonna go all out you know and he's like <laughs> I, love it. I love it so yeah. people in america have no idea 
the opportunities we have here. Like, you can't go to Armenia and make a million bucks. Like, you'll have to own half the freaking country to make a million bucks, you know? And yeah. here we can do it within 10 years if we just follow the system that we we all know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to open it up to the audience here in about five to 10 minutes. If you want to prepare some of your questions that you can actually ask David, uh, we, of course, want to be respectful of his time. So I'm just going to go through, ask a couple of more questions and I'll open it up here in about, again, about five minutes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the accountability side of things. Um, I mean, what is just give walk me through some of the things that you've done in the past accountability wise, what accountability are you working on now? What are some things? Talk to me about accountability. Yeah, I got a ton of accountability, man. I mean, from the moment I wake up, I have accountability. So basically, um, I have a check in and I use WhatsApp. And by the way, if any of you guys want to be held accountable for like health and fitness goals, um, we have an accountability that I set up where we have to take a photo of ourselves doing whatever it is. So some people go on a hike, some people run, some people are training for marathons. I'm not. Um, but I do cold plunges and I'll take a photo of that. I do, um, I don't know. I, I do cardio, I do weights and this is like a seven day a week thing. Um, so we just take a photo of us and then I have a affirmation accountability. I have a check-in accountability when I jump on the phones. Uh, I have my team accountability. So I have to be in the office by seven 30. I'm actually getting it at like seven 15, which has been amazing. Every, there's accountability for everything. And I learned this from Michael Young. And he told me a few years ago, I think 2019, he was like, David, you got to box yourself in. You got to put yourself in this box where you can't, you, you got to go straight because the box to the right is, you can't go there. To the left, you can't, and back, you can't go. You just got to go straight. Yeah. Um, it's been very powerful. And my numbers have been incredible uh, so far this year because of all the accountability that I've set up. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's it, accountability, at least for me on the personal side of things. I, I'm, I'm a pretty disciplined guy, but I always notice where where I don't have accountability is the place where I have some wiggle room. And sometimes that wiggle room becomes a lot. <laughs> so, you know, uh, like you said, box yourself, box yourself in. I, I too, I, I obviously I'm not anywhere near in production that I used to be. But I mean, when I was in full production from the time that I would wake up till almost actually even till the time I went to sleep sometimes, you know, because I would sit there and report I read my 10 pages for today and that would be at, you know, a 930 check in as an example. Um, and, and this well, is your gratitudes for the day and send that to your team like I do that too at night, literally in bed. Yeah, it's uh, the accountability is key. It's 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 key because we're independent contractors. It's so easy for us to be like, ah, I'll just do that tomorrow. You know, yeah. it's all I'll leave the office a little early. Yeah. Like when I first started, man, I don't know. I, I didn't leave the office till late 45. <laughs> yeah. I was calling yeah. it till late 45. Yeah. 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 So the accountability helps us align up a lot of those, you know, those disciplines, creating those habits and um, you know, just you know, I talk to agents all the time and then they'll sit there and say, oh, I don't really like accountability. Or I do have that one accountability partner for that one thing. <laughs> uh, but wait a minute, I haven't checked in with them for the last two weeks. So let me let me follow up with them. <laughs> I'm not good. That, that partner is failing, by the way, because that partner should be calling that agent out and saying, hey, why aren't you checking in? So on our, on our um, affirmation check in, if people aren't checking in, we're like, hey, are you working or are you off? If you're if you're working you're out of the group and it creates a really strong group because as soon as one person starts like kind of phasing out then there's two other people that are like oh that guy's slacking or that girl's slacking i'm going to do the same thing and it like it, you're as strong as your weakest link yeah that's that's a very very good point i really love that um i'm going to share just real quick from a coach's perspective for me personally i never really cared for the one-on-one -on -one accountability um, and I've had some very, very strong, committed type of people. Um, but the problem with the one on one accountability kind of, um, you know, it fizzles away. You might go strong for a week or two, maybe a month or two, but it fizzles away. I've always done accountability groups, which I encourage everybody to do. And even in the accountability groups, I would encourage you to ideally keep that around four or five, six members would be ideal. Some groups are a little bit bigger. My only concern is when the group gets too big. It becomes a reporting group and then nobody calls each other out. 
So you got to make sure that your group has that uh, integrity. You have to be able to have accountability where people are sitting there calling you out and being, hey, David, it's 958, dude, you didn't check in. What's going on? Are you not showing up today? You need people like that. That's the people that, of course, that are going to lift us up, which the saying goes, um, I can tell your net worth by the closest five people to you. So um, thank you for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, go ask one more question from a direction of if, if David can go back, I don't know, let's say six, seven, eight years ago, what would the David of 2024 tell the David of 2018 to do different or approach different? Um, so on this one, I have a hard time answering it because I truly feel like my 2016, 17 and 18 were really, really strong. Uh -huh. Um, if I could, if I could change one thing, I would probably not add so many people to my database um, as quickly as I did. Mm. Uh, I had a pretty good conversation with somebody and I'm like, database, database, database. And then I had to, then I had to funnel them out because they had no idea who I was. So what's a database, somebody that's going to recognize you if you're walking down the street. And these people didn't even know my name, yeah. but I was I'm saying they're my database. So I, I wish I was a little stricter with, um, who I put into to, to my center of influence. But other than that, uh -huh. I'm I followed the freaking system, dude. I role played in the mirror. I did a listing presentation every day in the mirror from 6:45 to 7. At 7, I had a role play to 7:15. 7:15 role play to 7:30. 7:30, I jumped on the phones typically. Sometimes it was eight, but mm -hmm. most thirty. Yeah. Um and I, I literally, if I didn't have an appointment, I stayed in the office till almost nine o'clock. I said 8:45. I'm serious. I, yeah. I love your discipline, man. I mean, I think one of the things, you know, we had a that little short window where we were role playing together and yeah. and a day would be like, hey, dude, I got I, I got to go. I got to go get on the phones. And I'm like, dude, but you have no idea who you're talking to. You know how amazing I am? <laughs> I'm just you are amazing. I will say you're, you're yeah. awesome. I appreciate that. Um, I was obviously being a little bit silly, but I love your discipline. That's what I actually um, admire, you know, the most about you, you know, and um, I, I'm proud to call you, of course, you know, a friend of mine. Um, yeah, you absolutely. I'm, robot. I'm not. I'm I actually, I'm a really nice guy, but <laughs> I follow my schedule and no. the schedule leads me to the results I have. Every no. And the other thing I tell agents is like, don't follow my schedule. You're mm -hmm. You got your own goals. Stop comparing yourself to me. I have agents in my office that are in the business for like two years. They're like, well, I want to be you. I'm like, okay, well, good luck because it's going to take you years. You're not going to do it next year. Yeah. I had an agent interview with me saying, he, I think he made like 150 grand year one, which is really good. And then he's like, well, I want to do 1 million. Uh, I'm like, that's not how it works, man. Like get real, you know? Yeah, you got you got to go through the trenches. You got to grind it out. You got to lay your foundation, and then you know it, it'll come. It'll come if you want it. It'll truly come. All right. So um, let me open it up to the audience so that if any of you have any questions, um, go ahead and chime away. Uh, who has a question that can actually uh, be addressed I, to? You? I do have a question. Hi, David. Nice to see you again. Okay. I did. I had the honor to meet you in person last year at the Superstar Retreat. I don't know if you remember me. I believe so. I, I don't know. I, I believe so. Your voice sounds very familiar, that's for sure. A <laughs> uh, few short questions for you. Are you a morning person? Am I what? Warm? Are you a morning person? Morning person. So I was never a morning person. Um, and I actually track all my sleep with this aura ring. Um, and it even says that my chronotype makes me the, the best time for me to wake up is like between six and six 30, but I find myself because of the industry I'm in, um, just forcing myself to get up a little bit sooner. So I'm trying to change my chronotype, which I'm like, I don't know if it's even possible, but, um, I am waking up between like four 50 and like five 15 daily. I'm in the gym typically by five 30. So I wouldn't call myself a morning person. Cause I, I grew up when I grew up, I, I was working with Asia for, for work. I had a small business. So I would look, I would work all the freaking time. Um, and I, I stayed up super late because it was daytime for them at night. Um, are you having issues waking up in the morning or, or what, why'd you ask that? There is no an issue wake up in the morning. The issue is start moving my body in the morning. I'm okay. no morning person. I go to the bed nine, 10, sometimes late than 10 
But I'm still waking up early around six, six, six between six and six thirty. The thing is, my major challenge is to start okay, be completely awake and start move on. That one is my big challenge, and I've been trying for so many years. So many years. Yeah. I'm really good at the night, even in I go, 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 go by the morning. My goodness. Yeah. Well, maybe consider some accountability about uh, setting up yourself up with some accountability and being like, hey, we got to check in with each other that we're in the gym by this time. Because like me, I'm in the office by 715. You're still waking up. So who's going to have a better chance of converting that potential client? Me. I mean, I've I've been working since 445, five o'clock, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a matter of what your goals are. So what, what what is uh, your motivation to be up and get ready every day? Because every day we wake up with different mood, right? Different mood. Yes, we make you. What that is your major motivation to be up and get ready and move on? Because everybody, every individual has their own motivation. What that is your motivation? Yeah. Be up every day. Uh, my motivation is the fact that what we do is such a joke for the amount of money that we make. And it's like, I, you know, I don't want to do this when I'm, I, I'm not going to work at this level when I'm 60 years old. Now, a lot of people say, BS, you're too competitive. You will. But I don't think I will personally. Like I, if, if I have kids, I'm, I'm going to want to be really involved with the kids. If I have a wife, I, I'm, I'm going to want to be, you know, a very loving husband and so on. Um, so for me, it's more about like, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it as quickly as possible. And if I want to break into this market, if I, if I slacked, I wouldn't have broken into the market. I would have been crushed in my opinion, but I did it really, really quickly. And, and I, I don't want to do it any other way. Like you either do it right and do it quick or, or, or don't do it at all. I just think we have no excuse. And I keep saying that. And I don't know if it's motivating people or not, but it really should. Like you have no excuse if you want to produce like you got to create goals for yourself that'll get you excited because you got to excite yourself. I just started reading this, uh, one of the Earl Nightingale books uh, last night. And they talk about if you have no goals, you have no direction. And if you have no direction, you're like a ship that's like just spinning in circle in the middle of the sea. So you have to have your goals, which will motivate you to, to get out of bed and do whatever you got to do. And if you're not getting out of bed, that probably means your goals and your motivation are not high enough. Yeah, so yeah, one thing, if I true. can, if I can chime in here real quick, Adriana, just to tie in with what, you know, David is talking about, um, the, from a coach's perspective, the challenge is always the goals. When agents don't have clearly defined goals, they just find themselves validating, excusing, because if you go back and you watch this, it's a very common thing for people to sit there and say, well, I'm not this person and I'm not that person and I don't do this because of this and I don't do this because of that. Um, number two is the discipline behind it. Um, you have to have the discipline behind it. And even though you don't have the discipline, you have to create the accountability. So it, it lines up with almost everything that David just mentioned. Okay. So this is something that is really important because I know you're not the only one that's dealing with this. This is a very, very, very common thing. So you have to really look at your goals. You have to be able to look at developing the discipline. And for that matter, you have to be able to have sometimes the accountability. So, um, uh, there's very few people that are actually morning people, okay? It's not a morning people thing. It's a goal thing. It's the fact that you're not clear as to with what it is that you want, okay? Because I am not a morning person. I'm the kind of person that if I can yeah. sleep in, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if I can sleep in 10, 11 o'clock, you know, I'd like to do that. But my body has gotten so used to 25 years of waking up 345, 4, 415, that now my body, even if I do want to sleep in, I'm on Saturday sometimes where it's just kind of like I'm awake, you know, because my body's so used to it. I'm waking up at like 4.50 with no alarm. It's so weird. And I'm tired. My ring shows me that I might have not gotten the best quality sleep, but it's just like, it's getting to the point where it just becomes literally like clock clockwork. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Who, who else has a question that we can address? We're going to get uh, David for five more minutes. What other questions do we have? I got one, David. How you doing? I'm Mike Daly from Chico, California. Awesome. Yeah, heck yeah. So talking about accountability, right? Because uh, Robert's my coach, and he really encourages, like you said, like you said, a, a group 
accountability, six or seven guys. But he also talks about having a uh, a fine if you don't meet meet the uh, the rules of the accountability group. Yeah. Do you do that same thing, or is it pretty much if you don't do it, you get kicked out? Um, so it, it depends. Whatever works for you um, is what I would say. So some people are motivated by losing mo losing money not or not losing money, let's say. And then other people are motivated by like recognition and shame, right? So they're like, well, we don't want to get called out. So whatever works for you. So I found in, in accountability groups, uh, like I we had this girl on the team that was in an accountability group and the money thing wasn't an issue. She was like, hundred bucks, hundred bucks, hundred bucks. But then when we were like, hey, Liz, you're you're screwing up, she was like, shoot. And then she stepped up her game. So um, sometimes it's if it's financial, it, it it hurts people more than it benefits them. But it's just whatever benefits you. I've had accountability groups where I had thousand dollars, thousand dollar checks that um, my junk would cash if I was to not hit my contact call for the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well. Cool. Yeah, I talked to Carlos at the last retreat. He goes, "Oh yeah, I'll help you out. Just write me three checks for a thousand dollars each." Yeah, those guys know how know how out of the I was like, hey, <laughs> See you later, Carlos. It it could be a revenue stream for some people. So yeah, right. <laughs> hey, and one more, one more, David. You talked about your ring. What is that? The sleep ring. Oh, it's the aura ring. It's the aura ring. So it's one of these, and it tracks your sleep. And there's a little app. Um, oh. it's really cool. Um, I, I, I love this thing. My girlfriend does not, but I do. Um, <laughs> so I highly recommend it. It tracks your fitness. It's kind of like an iPhone watch or whatever you call it, an iWatch. Um, but it's just a ring and, um, it's just cause I wear a, I wear a watch, like a, a nicer watch. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks David. All right. Anybody yeah. else have a question? All right. I've so heard, I've heard you do a role play every day, correct? Um, right now, I'm not role playing every day. And I will say my skills have gotten pretty bad compared to what they were. I used to role play twice a day, 7, 7, 7, 15, 7, 15, 7, 15, 7, 30, five days a week. Uh, now I have like three role plays a week, 15 minutes. If you are looking for a role play, I want to join it. Sounds good. <laughs> I will. I will uh, keep that in mind for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, David, any final thoughts before we let you go? Anything else you want to add? Anything from anything? Um, I guess I could chat with you guys about some like books and favorite quotes really quickly. If if anybody wants to write these down. Um, so my favorite quote, it's like my motto in life is how you do anything is how you do everything. Uh, and, and that's personal and professional. I mean, even keeping something clean or picking something up off the ground that's not supposed to be there. Um, I, I, that's just, I just live by that. And then um, as far as some books that I can recommend, uh, and, and these some of these might help with the motivation, Showboat, uh, it's The Life of Kobe Bryant. An amazing book if you want to be motivated. That dude is a grinder. Uh, Elon Musk, amazing, amazing book about Elon. It's like the only reporter or whatever she is, he allowed to follow in his life uh, and write the book about him. Uh, that one's huge. Um, and then health, health wise, actually one more um, in regards to motivation, The Wealthy Gardener, huge, one of my favorite books. Love this book. Um, will help you with uh, financial planning, investment properties, and so on. And then health wise, Wim Hof method. I do a lot of breath work. I do breath work every day. I do a 10 minute cold plunge every day with 10 minutes of breath work while doing that. Uh, incredible, incredible. Uh, the blue uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I interrupted. I tried to write it down, but uh, first book and third book. Could you repeat oh, it? Sure. And I, I know you, this will be recorded, but uh, Showboat, The Life of Kobe Bryant, Elon Musk, um, which is his autobiography or biography or whatever. Um, and then The Wealthy Gardener, The Wealthy Gardener. Um, and then health, health wise, The Wim Hof Method the Wim Hof, W-I-M-H-O-F method and the blue zones, which are the, the highest concentration of cent centurions or whatever the, the name is for the people that live a hundred plus years. So, wow. Thank you. Yeah. So, sure. all right. Anything else, David? That's it. I hope uh, this is helpful. I hope I 
motivated some of you guys because you got <laughs> motivated, man. We, we got to put a little harder. We yeah. So and and it's so simple. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm rolling these things out again. And of course, the very first person I thought of was you, which I am beyond grateful for you making time because I know that uh, 40 minutes out of your day, <laughs> it, it's quite costly. I'm not going to write you a check, but I'm going to say you thank you for so much. Uh, thank you so much for actually, of course, being here. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you all, all right. for being all right, man. energy was great. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for participating. Have a good one. I'll see you all soon. Bye bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the world. You can't hand it down. And of course, as always, I'll see you at the top.